and thank you for attending the IDEX Solutions Lunchtime Webinar Series. Our topic for today is creating quick shop instructions with 3D Via Composer. My name is Susan Crowden and I'll be hosting you today. And I have a couple of housekeeping issues I'd like to go over. First and foremost, please mute your phone by pressing star six. And then if you want to unmute your phone, press pound six. I wanted to let everyone know that the summer webinar series is an eight, I think it's up to 10 part series now. And if you attend four or more sessions, you'll be entered to win an iPod Touch, um, 32 gig iPod Touch. The presentation will last no longer than 45 minutes, followed by 15 minutes of questions and answers if you choose to hang on the line. Next slide. I wanted to give you a little bit of information about IDEX Solutions. Uh, we were founded in 1996 and have been a Dassault Systems reseller ever since that time. We sell and service the following products, Catia, Anovia, 3D Via, and Delmia. We do implementation services, customizations, process development. We do automation, and we have a training facility here in Portland, Oregon. We have three locations on the West Coast, one in Seattle, one in Portland, and one in Los Angeles. And we also provide a lot of engineering services to our customers. We provide uh, contract staffing, on-site engineering staff, and process consulting. Uh, our presenter for today is Abe Sahi. And Abe, thank you very much for taking this over in such a short notice. We ask Abe to do this presentation for us um, as someone here was not able to do it. So again, thank you, Abe, and I'll give you a little bit of information. Abe is an application engineer at Dassault Systems and has been working with the 3D Via product line for over a year now. He's worked at Dassault Systems for five years with the bulk of his experience coming from digital manufacturing or the Delmia product line. Prior to working at DS, he was working at, as an STA powertrain engineer for Ford, Ford Motor Company. He has a BS in engineering mechanics from Michigan State University with a concentration in material science. So with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Abe. Um, okay, guys, so today uh, I'm going to quickly give you an overview of 3D Via Composer. Um, as many of you probably know, Desso Systems as a group, um, we have several different uh, offerings. Uh, the two to the left you see, SolidWorks and CATIA, uh, are our CAD softwares. Um, and then in the simulation side, uh, we have Simulia, which used to be Abacus for FEA analysis, uh, and uh, Delmia, again, as Susan mentioned, is more of the manufacturing. So now that you've done uh, engineering analysis on your part, how am I going to actually manufacture that part? That's where Delmia comes into play. Uh, we also have Anovia, which is uh, basically a data management uh, software for uh, all your IP. <clears throat> and then this new brand uh, to the right, where 3D via uh, uh, fits in really into Desso systems is lifelike 3D experiences. Um, so what does that mean? Um, basically, we as a company realize uh, that the entire world really quickly is going into a 3D uh, environment. And engineering for a long time has kind of been lagging behind. Uh, and we notice this, as many of you guys probably do or have kids who play video games, and you see the kind of environments uh, that they immerse themselves in. Uh, the thinking was, well, why can't we do this and offer this kind of environment, this lifelike experience uh, in, a, in the engineering world as well? So 3D Via actually com uh, consists of two products. One is Composer that we'll be, we'll be talking about today. Uh, which you can uh, use for assembly instructions, uh, any documentation you might need to uh, create. Um, and we also have a brand called Virtuals, which is uh, mainly used uh, as a development uh, language, and it's being used for your PlayStations, Xbox, and video games, and uh, all the fun stuff of that nature. <clears throat> so again, what is 3D Via Composer? Um, the so Composer uh, is a, a, a non-engineering authoring tool 
And by that, what I mean is uh, you do not need to be a CAD expert to use Composer. The only requirement is that you must have access to some uh, CAD. Uh, the good news on that uh, end is that it doesn't have to be a Tissot CAD system. You can have basically any CAD system that's offered out there, uh, and we can uh, read in that uh, data inside Composer where you can begin authoring your content. And some of the things you can do, again, is assembly instructions, uh, service procedures, installation docs, field servers for manuals. Uh, basically, if you have a product and you need to tell a story about that product, uh, so. so how did the need for uh, Composer develop? Uh, basically, we realized the, you know, the product documentation hasn't really evolved uh, as quickly as we had hoped. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen uh, the product documentation you see now. Uh, it's very static, uh, very complicated to understand. Uh, in certain cases, you actually have uh, somebody go out in the shop with a Polaroid camera, take pictures, and try to uh, convey uh, a work instruction uh, using that methodology. And the problem, the drawback is that before you can really start on your product documentation, uh, in the past, we'd have to wait for uh, the engineering or design team to release a part, to, to give you some kind of CAD, uh, which then you would uh, take and begin your documentation, which basically uh, kind of adds to the, the time cycle there. And then you have the age-old problem that uh, two weeks from now, there's an engineering change. Well, what do you do to your documentation now? Well, now you have to redo all that work. Uh, you don't really know where in the line uh, or on the shop floor, uh, what revisions you've got out there. So it's a very uh, a complicated method of redoing work, working, redoing it. So we sought to get rid of that. And uh, the way we do that is a composer lets you uh, enter your documentation cycle uh, in parallel with engineering. So the way we do that is you have access to um, uh, the CAD that uh, your engineers are, are producing. And as that CAD uh, uh, gets online, uh, the person doing the documentation can use 3 dba Composer to check out some of the CAD, start working on their documentation. It doesn't need to be a finished part as of yet. And while engineering is doing their stuff, uh, we can start with documentation. So again, the idea is that we can use 3D and leverage it to a, a wide variety of disciplines. So these are a so list of so kind of an old list of some of the companies right now that are using 3D via. So we have uh, a lot of automotive, a lot of aerospace, some medical device companies. Um, so uh, you know the companies are definitely seeing a huge benefit of using things like that. Um, for example, John Deere uh, comes to mind where um, they were having to uh, uh, create these field service manuals for their multiple locations worldwide. And uh, basically, they would have to translate this manual in you know, several different languages all across Europe, Asia, the United States. Um, and they were static manuals. Was 4,000 some words long try to explain uh, an assembly or a service procedure on one of the equipment. Um, so using 3D via, they were able to get rid of that manual, use only 3D to communicate, uh, which basically uh, saved them the trouble of having to uh, translate their manuals to different languages. So they basically used 3D as a universal language across their uh, ecosystem. So how does uh, Composer work? Uh, like I said, the only prerequisite to Composer is you must have some access to 3D CAD. So if your facility doesn't have CAD, uh, then Composer is not going to do you any good. Uh, and the good thing is uh, it can be any CAD system. So basically what we do is we take that CAD and uh, we collect the information and we import it into 3D via Composer which basically takes that CAD file and uh, uh, changes it into .SMG format. 
which is native to Composer. It's kind of like a lightweight uh, graphical representation. If you guys are familiar with uh, V5, think of it like a CGR. So once it's in Composer, uh, the documentation person can often author their content, uh, create the 2D views, uh, animations they want to, uh, explodes all the good stuff. But then uh, once that content's been created, uh, we can distribute it in a, a, a wide variety of ways. Um, we can embed the, the 3D via player in the PDF, any Microsoft Office product. Uh, you could share it online. Uh, you can distribute it um, by just zipping it up and sending an executable over to the person who's going to interact with it. Um, and I'll show you examples as we go into the, the live demo, which since we only have 45 minutes, uh, I think I should probably just go into the demo right now. So here, uh, uh, I don't know how fast my screen is refreshing, but you should see uh, a forklift. Um, again, uh, this is, I believe this data came in from ProE. Uh, just to give you guys an idea of what kind of 3D files are supported, you'll see these are uh, basically all the CAD systems we support, uh, all the way from V4, uh, PDC, SolidWorks, you name it. Uh, there's a CAD system out there. We can definitely support it. Um, again, so uh, this came in from ProE, and I'm going to pretend that I need to uh, make a, a shop floor instructions to service this forklift. Um, and in particular, we're going to focus on uh, changing out the bearings of this forklift. So you can see in my, my environment, I've got the entire uh, forklift. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do now, as you'll see on my Views tab, I'm just going to collect that view really quickly. And we'll just call this the default view so we can reference back to this anytime we want to. Um, and you'll see, as I start tabbing through this part, I mean, this, this assembly is over 5,000 parts. I'm running it on a laptop. Uh, so you can see the kind of the power uh, that Composer puts in your, in your hands. And again, uh, uh, the assembly tree, as you'll see, uh, is exactly the same as you, you would see in your CAD system. So, so however you define uh, this in CAD is exactly how it shows up in Composer. There's no reason to, uh, to do anything else except go file open, and everything is uh, right where you left it from CAD. So Composer lets you uh, really quickly uh, interact with certain sub-assemblies that you want to interact with. For example, if I just want to focus on the, the hub, I can uh, click on, on the little wheel there, and I just left arrow click, and it'll find the parent of each part. Um, and I can click on this button and say, show me this selection only. And again, so now I'm really quickly able to just focus on, on the hub, which I'll be uh, using for this uh, demonstration. And again, I click the, the camera button select a new view of that hub, and I have it uh, go. Uh, at any time, if I want to uh, revert back to an old view, I just double click it. So, uh, you know, pretty simple there. I also have a, a lot of rendering options. So, for example, if I want to place this view uh, in a manual, I don't want the raster image. I just want some nice line art. Uh, I can really quickly create that tab. Then I can go into my module, uh, high resolution image, and we can save this out, you know, in a, in a JPEG format, PNG, TIFF, you name it. So uh, whatever view that you decide to collect, we can definitely output that into 2D, which you can then uh, plug into your documentation as you would need to. And all of this can be automated as well. I mean, I'm just doing it manually uh, right now. So let me go ahead and open up a sub-assembly because we are we don't really need all the parts in there to create our uh, animations. 
So here I've got uh, uh, just a, a subassembly of that forklift, which I'm going to use to create some interactive uh, uh, instructions for servicing the bearings. So what I'm going to do is go into my assembly tree. I have my root directory here. Now I'm going to apply a scenario that I started working on a little bit earlier. Let me apply a scenario. So I've got the scenario saved in a library. So basically what a scenario is, is if I've gone ahead and uh, done some work or somebody in my facility has done some work on, uh, let's say there's a standardized way in this case to removing this wheel out, I don't have to redo that work. I can just use somebody else's work that's already been done. And you can see my little camera turned into a uh, movie camera, which kind of lets me know that I'm in animation mode now. And the way animations work, I'll just play through. Um, and it's almost like a, a Windows movie editor kind of environment uh, where you've got a concept of a timeline. And as we pick and click certain parts, uh, these keys are automatically generated. So you can see uh, I have a procedure for removing that wheel. So I am just going to stick with it. And I can call this, you know, step one, or however you might want to label it. So again, uh, so to focus in on just the bearings, let's suppose at time equals zero seconds, I want to collect the camera view. And right when that bowl starts to highlight, let's say I want to zoom in. So basically all I'll do is just click on the camera key again. And as I move my cursor, you'll see all Composer is doing is creating your animations uh, by taking the, the, the difference between those two camera positions. So it's very easy to create these animations. It doesn't take uh, much time at all, as you'll see. Um, so now I'm ready to start adding my own work onto this animation. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is hide the stuff that I do not need to see. So let me grab these guys here. I'm going to take the location key, keep advancing my timeline. And we have uh, some effects that we can put in there. I'm going to say fade out, um, just because we don't really need to, to deal with those parts right now. So once I've done that, you'll notice that this, uh, this hub uh, right now is not a finished CAD part. So this is assuming that uh, you know, engineering does not know what this final piece is going to look like. Well, that's fine. I just have a, a something to take its place, and I can still work on my documentation and create the uh, the views, the steps that I want. And then later on, we can always update that uh, hub, which I'll show you uh, how to do it a little later. So we've got um, uh, a lot of different tools that we can use. For example, I can uh, put a cutting plane in there. And the reason I'm doing that is when we go ahead and update that hub, I just want to show you that, uh, you know, uh, how the cross sections change and everything. Uh, and, and these animations we create, we don't have to recreate anything once we've already done it once. So let's say right about there, and I only want to apply that to the, uh, to the hub itself, not the uh, entire forklift. So I'm going to take uh, this uh, um, cutting plane, and you'll notice we have a lot of properties for this cutting plane. Uh, what I can do is turn uh, the op opacity down, so basically it doesn't really in interfere with our, our, uh, our view here. And I'm going to make that uh, our neutral property for that uh, cutting plane. So as you can see, I mean, you can always check your work by just dragging your uh, cursor down the timeline. Make sure you've got the exact behavior uh, you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. Because our next step is going to be to address this nut that needs to come out to get to the bearings. So what I can do, uh, let's put a 3D arrow in there just to show uh, which way uh, whoever's going to service this uh, forklift needs to 
turn that nut. And I can animate that actually. So I'm going to turn down this uh, angle slider. I'll take a location key, advance my timeline. And you'll see, in effect, what I'm doing is really animating some instructions without actually writing down in a manual turn uh, uh, clockwise with the, uh, to, to remove that nut. I can just show them visually, uh, which oftentimes has a much better effect. And we can fade that out. So now I can grab that nut. I'm going to set a location key and keep advancing my timeline, transform. So I'm just going to rotate that guy now. And you can see every time I do this, it creates a new key for what I'm doing. So I'm just visually saying, uh, conveying which way that thing needs to turn. And then when I'm ready to remove it, And let's go ahead and stick some uh, paths in there so they can easily see which plane uh, that that sits on and it needs to come out on. So once we get to this part, uh, you know, you can always go back, check your work, see how it's looking so far. So let's say right about here when I get to that, that this step, I want to call this step two. I can do that. So now I get to a point where I'm ready to go ahead and select those bearings and remove them as well. Now, if this was a traditional CAD system like TIA, which a lot of people will try to create uh, uh, work instructions using a CAD system and have a CAD engineer say, hey, grab all these parts for me and explode them on this, uh, on this plane, uh, uh, and I want the view to look like this. Um, Anybody who has used CAD knows how hard that is to do. I mean, it's a very time-consuming uh, project. So what I'm instead going to do is show you how we can use Composer and what kind of tools are available to us. I can just start hiding certain parts that I don't need right now. So these are all my bearings. So I say, okay, let me grab all these guys. Actually, let me do it the other way around. Um, and what I'm going to do is say, hey, I want to create a selection set for what I've grabbed. And in my selection, oh, did I not create that? Let me try this again. the selection set. Set a location key. And let's explode linearly. So just that step there, if you were trying to use CAD to do that, would take you I mean, it would probably take a good CAD user an hour to create that, that view. Uh, so really quickly in the animation, I can show you exactly how to get to the bearings. And let's suppose, you know, we're just changing this guy out or this guy and that guy. Um, I can grab these two parts. Let me turn off the explode. Take a, a location key for those guys. And we can move those out of the way, right? Just to visually show people uh, exactly which part I'm talking about. And let's just uh, label something there. So I can, you know, write uh, my cat blocks around. You know, just visually write some text and say they change these parts. Um, 
I'm going to set that as a neutral property, set a location key, and let's save that guy out. So anytime I can go back and let's check our work. Turn off the translation. So again, I, I see how the wheel is removed. Um, uh, so you can imagine having to write these instructions in a, in a book uh, rather than visually seeing in 3D exactly what my job's going to be. So if I'm on a shop floor and I have access to rich content like this, um, it just makes my job a lot easier than having to read a giant manual. So I can say, okay, this is the plane that these uh, uh, bearings come out in. Here's the two bearings that I need to change out. And this is how I, how I do my job. So again, at any time, we can go back to the views pane. So let's suppose you've got a, a script, a little uh, animation that you've already made. But we realize, you know, not everyone's going to use uh, uh, the, you know, the super fancy animations. You still want to create some 2D output to put in a manual. Well, I can always grab um, uh, any view from my animation. So, you know, again, I can create a default view. I can say, let's say I want to put my hub in there. I mean, if, if this is the content that, uh, you know, I want to direct my end user to, I can quickly reference it. Let's go back to my default. Let's switch back to animation. Uh, let me go back to the assembly tree, turn everything on. And let's say right here, when we do the explode, uh, we want to collect a, a view of that as well. We can name that uh, exploded. And the reason I'm doing that is let's say I want to create a quick uh, bill of materials uh, for these parts in particular. I can, let me hide this uh, hub. Okay. So I can go back to the tree. Um, and grab these parts. Say these guys right here. Go to my modules, and you'll notice we have a bill of materials module. Um, so it's important to note here, if in your CAD system you already had some bill of material info, um, I could always just reference it from your CAD system. And since in this case I had nothing that was uh, imported in, I'm just going to ask uh, Composer to go ahead and create some BOM IDs for me for these parts that are highlighted. So it just grabs them, tells you which, how many quantities, uh, puts some bill of material info. And I could tell Composer, hey, put some callouts in there for me as well. Um, and again, everything has properties, so we can make them as big as we want to. Um, we can place them. In, in any kind of uh, uh, formation, if you will, that we want. Let's see, we've got circle, parametric. So again, we'll just use bottom for this, this case. So the, the concept is just how much, how easy and quick it is to do this kind of stuff. So I can just have a, a callout view. Um, also, uh, let's suppose, uh, again, I want to put some vector art uh, with these call-ups into uh, uh, 2D format, export that out. I've got a tech illustration module as well. So what this does is uh, it's going to take this, uh, whatever's in this view pane right here, uh, in this case, this exploded view, and I'm going to tell Composer uh, why don't you quickly go ahead and create some vector line art for me that I can then use to stick in a manual. So it creates this uh, line art, and you'll notice I told it to place the bill of materials table in there as well. And the really cool part is, you know, you can click on something and you can see exactly where that part's located. And this is kind of like the rich interactive content that uh, your end user is going to have uh, access to. to you know, it's not just a static 2D manual. 
Um, they can go through and click on things, uh, rotate things, see in a very interactive fashion, uh, create some content. And again, I can save this out. You know, we can call this uh, exploded uh, bomb. Save it out as an SVG file if we want. And then again, you know, anybody can use that SVG file later. So I'm going to quickly go ahead, uh, let's see, let's import some views. So basically, if you have some standard views for any product that must go into your manual, um, I can go ahead and save those styles or those view format in Composer. And it'll take whatever I have and, uh, and create the views uh, for me. So in this case, you know, I always know that I want a top view of my product. I want a front view of my product. All, all that stuff's available to you. Um, and if I want to uh, put in some interactive content, uh, I can do that as well. Uh, so let's suppose my first view is this default view, uh, and I want to attract some attention uh, and kind of link other views in a certain sequence. Uh, the way I would do that, let's suppose I click on this, uh, uh, on this wheel, I can create an event, a pulse event. And let's uh, let's do it in green. And what I'm going to do is let's let's look at the the views we've created. So what's going to happen is that wheel is going to start pulsing or blinking in green, which kind of attracts uh, uh, whoever's going to interact with this uh, their attention. And when they click on that blinking part. I want to link them to this other view called up. But you know, I can very easily direct them to a file. If you have this, if this is on a, uh, you have more information on this product online, you can redirect them to a, a website, an FTP. Uh, you can direct them into a certain point in your animation. It's very interactive. But in our case, uh, we'll stick with the, the view hub. And the only thing I have to do is make sure that I update this view so all that information is stored. Then let's say when I get to this hub, and let's just remove this guy because, uh, or translate this guy out so you can talk, you can see clearly the hub. Let's do this. update that view. So again, uh, so once I click on that wheel, it's going to refer me to this view. And then let's suppose, uh, let's just make this guy blink. Same, same concept. I just create new events. That's fine, pulse in green. Again, I'm just going to redirect you to another view. And let's say, once they click on that, I want the end the user to go to the exploded view section. Okay. Make sure you update your view. So all that stuff's uh, uh, stored internally. So basically, the way I would kind of check my work is uh, I've got a design mode tab here. So once I'm in design mode, I'm just kind of checking really quickly when I go and publish this uh, content that I've created. This is uh, uh, the interactivity I'm going to see, or my end user is going to see. So again, you see the wheel pulsating. I click on it. And again, I'm in my exploded format. So quick and easy stuff, uh, very powerful uh, if you want to communicate, again, in 3D. Um, one thing I'll mention, let's suppose I'm ready to to publish this, uh, you know, I've checked over everything, and now uh, engineering's come back and says, "Hey, Abe, uh, this hub we finally haven't finished. Uh, you can incorporate that now." So, you know, in the past, I'd have to recreate all my work that I've done, but here I can just click on the part, 
And again, we can always automate any of this stuff. Uh, so it's all done uh, uh, through 3D via sync or any data management system you have. And I can go to geometry, say update geometry. I think I have my part in here. So again, you can see it's uh, from ProE. I'm just going to click on update. And it uh, launches the 3D via converter. So it's basically taking that CAD file, converting it into an SMG, which is the format for Composer. And voila, I've got an updated hub. All the bossing's been done. And you'll see as I play my animation, I don't really have to do anything more. It's just referencing the new geometry. And that's a very powerful uh, message for, for end users because uh, you know, it makes your documentation uh, a lot easier to manage. You can see the cross sections, everything's been updated. Uh, so everything I did in the past uh, is kept. And even if I go into my views, um, let's go ahead and turn on design mode. So I can just show you, well, you know, my views have been updated with the new geometry as well. So again, this is kind of how Composer will save you time. Um, Documentation is a lot quicker to do. And then you've got the concept of being able to uh, automatically have revisions and update parts as, as uh, parts change, which they always do in an engineering environment. So let's suppose uh, I'm happy with what I've done. Uh, so I'm ready for, to actually publish this stuff and start sharing this content. Um, I can just go into my file, and I've got a lot of uh, options there. So if I go on to save, um, again, I can save this as an HTML. I can save it to a PDF. Uh, um, I needed to do a save as, actually. Um, here's uh, some good uh, uh, um, points to make here. Let's suppose I am going to share this online somewhere, and I don't want anybody to be able to reverse engineer and get to my IP. Uh, we've got 3D via safe module, which has a security built in where I can check this off and say, reduce my accuracy of the model, which basically makes it impossible for people to go back and uh, steal your, your information. And I can also set a password if I want, so the file that I create uh, will expire, or I can set uh, you know a password on that uh, as well. And write manager is very important uh, because let's say the guys on the shop floor that you want to share this with their work instructions, you want them to be able to create annotations, their own cutting planes, uh, saves. So basically, you'll see when we save this out and we interact uh, as your end user is going to, they're going to have all the tools that I had to my disposal at their hands, too. So we'll just save this guy off with uh, uh, all these features enabled. Um, go to save. So now I can launch my my. 3D via Composer player. So again, there's there's two parts to uh, to Composer. There's the actual uh, 3D via Composer uh, authoring tool, and then then there's the standalone. This is a, a free player. So basically, we understand when you're sharing your content, when you're creating this, the end user uh, uh, is not going to have uh, Composer installed on their machine, which is fine. Uh, we can package up this free player, and this is uh, uh, something I'll show you how you embed it into other uh, containers as well. But this is what your end user is going to use to interact with uh, uh, your project. So let me see where I saved this guy. I think I've saved him in the updates. Sometimes this is very slow over uh, WebEx, so bear with me. I guess in the meantime, while this is loading, oops. 
I can show you, uh, so let's suppose that player, I want to embed something into a different Microsoft product or, or any product. So I'm just going to show you exactly how you would embed this into a PowerPoint slide, let's say. Um, I go to my developer tab. I've got different tools. Uh, so one of these is the 3D Via Player ActiveX. So again, once you install the software, you'll have these tools available to you or you can download them uh, off our website. Click OK. So right in my PowerPoint slide, I create a window, which is going to be uh, the base uh, where I'm going to put my player on top of. So I go to Properties. And I can point to any SMG file that I have. Um, in this case, let's, uh, let's pick something that I was working on prior. Uh, I think it's in here. Let's say this gearbox. So basically what I've done is uh, I've embedded that SMG file into this PowerPoint now. So if I go to presentation mode, you'll see my uh, 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 3D via player uh, start to load. So basically what this is doing is right within PowerPoint, you can imagine the power of this. I can email this to somebody because it's lightweight. It's not a CAD file. It's a SMG file. And again, I'm in this uh, environment, this 3D environment, where I can virtually interact with your product in a PowerPoint slide. And again, I have all those features available to me. Like I could tab out, click on whatever parts I need to. Uh, I have all the different views that I created. You see I have my sectioning view. Uh, and when you have a complicated product like this, this makes life a heck of a lot, a lot easier uh, when you have tools like this at, at your disposal to do your job. Now we've got different ghost views. I think I created some interactive content here as well. Um, the show names. Uh, so you can show the names of its two gears. Uh, I can show the inventory. You know, let's suppose uh, um, any kind of information you want to share about a product, I can incorporate that in the, in the, the file. Um, the end user can also make their own measurements. So if I want to, you know, somebody emails this to me, uh, I can definitely query what I want out of it. I can create my own annotations. Uh, you know, whatever I want to do, uh, I have full uh, interactivity. Uh, all the tools I have inside Composer are at my disposal. And again, this is 100% uh, uh, free. It's the free player. So this is how uh, maybe after this presentation is over, I'll, I'll zip this stuff up and send it to Susan, and she can send it to you guys if you're interested uh, so you can interact with this stuff as well. Uh, again, my animation is on top. So again, I can uh, share any kind of content I want to with this uh, gearbox. And it looks like a pretty complicated uh, product. So again, that's some of the, uh, the rich content you can create. Again, uh, you, know, you have the option of linking it up, uh, using anything as a container for your player. I could very easily have done this in uh, you know, Microsoft Word, uh, make an HTML file with all this information stored in as well. Uh, let's see. Um, it looks like we're having some graphics card issues with the, the WebEx here. Uh, are you guys able to see the screen? Well, you guys are probably still on mute. Um, but anyway, I mean, I think you guys uh, kind of get the concept of uh, what this tool is. Uh, we can definitely create the types of instructions in a, in a pretty rich environment, uh, create animations if we need to, kind of make a timeline, uh, make a story of the product, and then uh, we can share that content in, in any manner we want to with uh, whoever we're sharing it with. So I guess if uh, you guys want, we can definitely open this up to some Q&A. Um, I know I think uh, Susan might have some comments at the end there. Calling. We will return to take your call in just one moment. OK. 
okay? Oh. Phone needs to be on mute. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for calling. We will return to take your call in just one moment. So, Abe, can you put up the last slide, please? Yeah, it's up. Well, you can't see it. Thank you for calling. We will return to take your call yeah. in just one. See that's my screen, Susan? Okay, now we have it. So I want to thank everybody for attending the session today, and I hope that you found the information um, meaningful. And Abe, thank you very much. I just wanted to remind everybody that next week we're going to do part two of uh, CATIA V5 analysis, which will be thermal analysis. Um, and Greg Albrechtson from Dassault Systems will be the presenter for that. I just wanted to remind everybody that if you attend four or more sessions of this webinar series, you'll be entered to win a 32-gig iPod Touch from IDEX Solutions. So if, if you were on the call and you um, didn't register with IDEX, just drop us an email and let us know that you were on the call so we can make sure you get credit for your attendance today. And with that, I'd like to open the floor for questions for Abe. Does anybody have any questions? Jim O'Brien does. Okay, Jim, go ahead. Hey, Abe, can you explain yeah. the licensing strategy that's currently being used for Composer and maybe the future of that? Um, yeah, uh, I think I did share some information. So, uh, 2010 release, uh, we're going to uh, uh, different uh, licensing uh, strategy, but what I'll do is I'll talk with Garth Coleman, who's the uh, marketing director, and get that information out to whoever needs it. I think he's got a PowerPoint of the, the future plan. Perfect. Anything else? Oh, nice job. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very I much. Have, I do have one quick one. To, as far as uh, what comes across, is it just solids, or can you get the FTNA as well? Oh, yeah, definitely. We can get any kind of metadata that's in your CAD system. So, for example, if I have uh, tolerancing, GD&T, anything that, that was done, even uh, I think with, uh, if you have kinematics defined, uh, right. we can put that in as well. So all that stuff, uh, it's a good question. You have total access to everything. Okay. Any yeah, more questions? Qu yeah, I had a question. Can you okay, go ahead. Okay. How do, has it uh, worked with the composites package at all, at all as far as, you know, given uh, layup instructions? Um, so as of today, it does not, we do not, do not support any of the, the, the okay. composites because of the layering issues uh, when you've got hundreds and hundreds of different layers. Uh, but I do believe, I talked to R&D, that be something that we're looking to do in the future. Okay. That would be my main use for it is, yeah, just getting layup instructions to the text. Right. Okay. Any Thanks, more yeah. questions? No, good job, guys. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can audio be added? So, no, as of now, so the workaround for that would be, let's suppose you create some animation. We can easily use some uh, outside software like Camtasia or whatever uh, and record your uh, audio over that. Uh, so the, the entire concept behind this uh, technology was we do not want language incorporated in there. We want 3D to be the language. So, uh, you know, I could send a file off from Korea to the United States and two different people interacting with it will get the same experience. So if we had put an audio option over that, uh, I think we would have diluted our message for the product. But yeah, you can use other software to, to add your own audio for sure. A picture's worth a thousand words. Exactly. Okay. 
All right. Well, I want to thank everyone again for attending, and thank you very much, Abe. You did a great job. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.